I enlisted in the Navy in 2011. I won't bore you with all the details, but this happened when I was in basic training at Great Lakes, Illinois. I had three RDCs in my division. I could never forget their faces. One night, I awoke very early in the morning, probably around 2 or 3 a.m. I slept on the top bunk, and when I awoke, I nearly fainted because standing at my bunk, directly looking into my face, was a mysterious man. I opened my eyes wide and assumed he was an RDC. He cocked his head slightly to the right and said, Hi, Pumpkin. I just lay there, completely expecting to be ripped off the bunk at any moment. But nothing happened. The strange man stood there, in my face, looking into my eyes. I eventually closed my eyes because he was freaking me out too much and opened them again seconds later. Probably about 20 seconds later I opened them and he was gone. I lifted my head up and looked around. He was nowhere and I could hear a few guys coughing and snoring and I even heard the faucet in the head running. I laid there for a good while wondering what that was, who the hell that man was, and when morning came, I asked a few guys who were bunked near me if they saw him. They all said no and just laughed at me, assuming I was a weirdo making up pointless stories. I was there for another month and a half before I graduated to my A school, and I never saw him again. After graduating, I was able to speak with my RDCs normally without fear of getting my ass busted, and I asked them if they knew who he was and why he was there that night, and all three of them said they wouldn't have allowed another RDC to come mess with us. If I close my eyes at night, I can still vividly remember his face inches from mine. When I was in basic training back in 1995, I was one of the lucky recruits that was assigned to shovel snow all the time. My commander picked on me quite a bit, which is one of the reasons I think. I usually had to do it at night too, and when I went into basic, it was the middle of winter. It got cold as hell outside during the day, but at night, holy hell. It was unbearable. There were lights on everywhere at night, but when we got outside one night, we were instructed to shovel snow next to the corner of the building. If you looked down the side of the building leading to the back, there were no lights at all. As we shoveled, we whispered over and over about what bullshit this was and how cold we were. After 20 minutes of shoveling, Another guy, and myself, we both heard a noise coming from the back of the building, or the side. We couldn't really tell which, as it was completely dark back there. We stopped to listen for a second, and we both heard a distinct voice say the words, Follow me. The other guy and myself were very spooked by this, and weren't sure what to do. Our commander eventually told us it was quitting time, and the other guy told him about the voice back there. I have no idea if our commander went to check, but I seriously doubt it. I shoveled snow in the front of our building, and very close to that spot a couple more times in the next two weeks, but never with that guy again. One of the last times I shoveled snow outside, it was very late again and I was with a different guy this time. This time, I heard a voice say, Hello? The other guy didn't respond, and I asked him if he heard it. He said no, and I just continued shoveling. Then not a minute later, we both heard a laugh. It sounded like a laugh from a little boy. There's no logical explanation for that. There is no way a little boy could be hiding back there on our base. We both stood there 
squinting our eyes trying to see anything back there. And at first, we didn't see anything. We started shoveling again. And a moment later I was shoveling with my back turned to that area, and the guy that was with me suddenly reacted like somebody was running at him, and he fell backwards into the snow next to me. He said, Oh my god, there's someone back there. I turned around and I saw him too, or it, or whatever it was. I saw the head and shoulders of a person sticking out from the back of the building. It was so damn dark, you could just barely make it out, but it was a person. The person slowly moved out of sight back there once I saw it, and we both stood there in silence. We had no choice but to continue shoveling, and a while later, our commander came out and told us we were finished. Neither of us said a word, and I shoveled snow a few more times after that. I never heard anything or saw anything again, but I also never shoveled in that same area where we could see back there. I heard about ghosts that were supposedly haunting the base, but this didn't feel like that. I can't explain how it felt. There's just no way someone could have been back there, and I'm not sure I believe in ghosts, so I don't know. I'm a Marine, and when I was in boot camp, something very trippy happened to me. Towards the end of my training, we were able to eat the good stuff, and not limited to only the healthiest stuff in the chow hall. I would consistently get sausage for breakfast, and for a few days, it caused me to have massive heartburn. The heartburn would be the worst at night. And one night in particular, it was so bad, I couldn't sleep. And I mean, it was bad. It hurt like hell. There was no way I could get my hands on some antacids on this base. So that day, I didn't eat anything that would give me heartburn, but it didn't go away that night. I still had it chronically, and the only thing I could do to ease my suffering was flush my stomach with water. I would take my water bottle back and forth to the head to fill it up in the sink. The water was nasty, but I would chug and chug until the heartburn became less painful and I'd go back to bed. This caused me to have to pee throughout the night too. I woke up in the middle of the night, having to pee again, and walked into the head. I didn't expect to see what I saw. My bunkmate, Faust, was sitting on the bathroom floor, Indian style. He was facing the wall. I walked up behind him and said, Yo, Faust, you cool? He said back, Yep. I didn't want to say anything else or mess with him, so I just emptied my bladder, filled up my bottle, chugged it, and went back to sleep again. I woke up one more time that night, and when I went back into the head hours later, Faust was still sitting there, staring at the wall. I enlisted in the service ten years ago, and I'll never forget my boot camp experience. It was much more difficult than movies and TV shows make it seem and on top of it being a tough place to endure, something very weird and creepy happened to me while I was there. Only a few days after I arrived, I was eating in the chow hall. It was breakfast, I think, and while I was eating, I was keeping my mouth shut, and I was looking around as I ate, and I noticed this guy at the next table looking at me, at first I thought nothing of it, and figured this guy was feeling how I was, miserable, tired, not wanting to be there. But after a second or two of looking at this guy, I noticed he wasn't eating, and was just looking at me, like looking at me and at nothing else. I looked down and dipped a slice of apple in some peanut butter and ate it. 
and when I looked up again, I could see that he was still looking at me. I was tired and wanting to enjoy the few minutes I had while eating, so I kind of just looked away and forgot about him. A day passed, and the very next morning, I can remember it was breakfast on this second day, I noticed him again. He was sitting in a different seat, as I was, but he was still close enough that I could see clearly that he was looking at me again. The thought crossed my mind that maybe this guy was into me or something, but he was looking at me like he hated me. I locked eyes with him and almost spoke to him telepathically, basically saying, why the fuck are you looking at me? He was eating this time though, and when I looked over at him, he was always looking at me. There were so many people around. It didn't really make sense that he would just stare at one person, so I was very creeped out. Although, because of so many people being around, it didn't really bother me that much. I didn't feel threatened or scared. A day or two passed, and I was beginning to get the hang of being in boot camp. It was dinner the third time I noticed the guy. He was at the table next to mine once again, but this time he was facing away from me. He was really close, and I remember feeling happy that he couldn't just stare at me while I ate my dinner. This is when this became creepy as hell. When I was eating, he turned around and looked at me. I remember being very creeped out at this. He turned around and looked at me for a good five seconds before his instructor yelled at him to turn around. He did as he was told, but only seconds later he turned all the way around again to look at me. I looked down, I was so embarrassed, and his instructor went over to him and gave him an earful. I know my face was beet red, and it was a really intense moment. I looked back up like 30 seconds later, and he was gone. So was the instructor. I could see that people at the table where he was sitting were smiling, trying not to laugh. I'm assuming his instructor made him leave early. The rest of the duration of boot camp went by, and I didn't see him again until my last week there. I injured my ankle while doing PT, and I had to see a doctor about it. When I was sitting in the office waiting to be seen, the guy walked out of the hallway right next to me. I saw him immediately, but he didn't see me. I'm pretty sure he had just seen a doctor and was on his way out of the building. I sat there and was very happy he didn't see me. In the middle of my happiness, I looked up and saw him walking by the building outside of the window. Sure enough, he looked up and spotted me sitting down. The creepiest part of this last sighting is that when he spotted me, he stopped walking and looked through the window at me for a few seconds and then continued on. He always had a look on his face like he wanted me dead, like he wanted to hurt me. I hope I never see that guy again. The days in boot camp were pretty standard in the army. Get up, haul ass downstairs, and get screwed for petty things like standing a little bit out of file, not looking up high enough. We needed to be a proud soldier. Learning soldier fundamentals, immediate action drills, and just general discipline. The time that we look forward to the best was when we would head back to the bunk for a good night's sleep. Our company line, basically a barracks, was four stories high. The ground floor was occupied by our sergeant's offices, and the rest upwards were our bunks. Each floor's layout was the same. Once coming up from the stairs immediately to your left was the toilet, and it led to a long corridor with four rooms lined up, one after the other to the left. To the right was simply a guardrail to stop you from jumping out onto a ledge. Each room had eight bunk beds, so in total, 
16 occupants per room. I was in Platoon 1, Section 1, on the second floor, closest to the stairs and the toilet. Heading back to these simple barracks was the best. Anyone in service knows that sleep is considered gold here. The sergeants would do regular rounds to make sure we don't break curfew. And God help your soul if you did. We noticed they would drag chairs to the parade square and watch us from below. Now, at the time this didn't seem odd until we looked across at our sister barracks and observed that no other company was doing this. We chalked it up to our strict commanders, and who the hell cares when you've got that 5km run tomorrow morning? They stopped watching us after a while, but came back every night we booked back into camp after a weekend. Odd, but we accepted it after a while. Section 3 began to complain about noises and voices at night. They were fighting amongst themselves as who kept murmuring at night and shifting the communal tables and chairs. It wasn't until a couple of nights later that they realized it wasn't from any of them. They woke up at the same time and all heard the same voices. It started a bit of a scuffle between the other sections as they began to blame the rest of us for their lack of sleep. Though we swore it wasn't us. One night I will never forget. I had woken up and had the enormous urge to use the toilet. I crept down my bunk bed trying to avoid stepping on my bunkmate and tiptoed to the door. As I swung it open and took a step out, I was overwhelmed by a chilly feeling, like all the warmth was sucked from my body. Impossible for a place which was perpetually hot and humid out of the corner of my eye to the left, I noticed someone had stepped out of the Section 3 bunk as well. Only, it wasn't a man. She was draped in a white garment with long, flowing, dark hair. She turned and snapped her head towards me. I registered this at a split second and quickly went into the toilet to my right. I can't tell you the immense pressure I felt on my back as I felt her vision engulf my mind. I did my business and washed my hands avoiding the large mirror in front of me. As I left one of the stalls slammed shut and I sprinted back into my bunk and under the safety of my sheets. My body tensed as I heard her distant giggle from the door. I cried silently and kept squeezing my eyes shut. I didn't sleep much that night.